has the result. Right? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yes. So what are the results? Uh, I have the result. Uh, I have the result. Uh, have the result. Uh, and this impasse is longer than the other. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the announcement? Uh, yeah. Huh? Uh, new, new power. New power. Good. So I want to call it. How about this? You know, I am telling looks. Oh. This came in when I, when I was in Mecca for my Umrah. I just thought, I don't know what to say, let me like that. So gradually I thought, okay, let me use the limit. And um, I sent it to them, to them a choice. Of either keeping a youth man or a youth bar. So I let it to a youth bar. So he was, he was the um, uh, returning officer. So he said that I'm uh, now youth power. I can keep my youth, sir. Two in my book. Two in my book? Yes. Oh, uh, anyway, I'm going my books. Thank you so much. Uh, so let me just start with, uh, with first an introduction of um, the academy. So you, you understand, sure. and then I want to do the best speaker and understand. Uh, this came up as a result of the uh, University of the Gambia Student Union inviting us to partner with them. You know, they invited us to the guest speaker in, in Tenderbaka. And this was where? Who was it? Yeah, in general. In general. So when I went there, honestly, I was super impressed with this, what I call the kids, huh? I want to know them, but I was impressed with them. What I saw really was an asset of this country. You know, the level of organization, I mean, the level of commitment. So, uh, and that's what I do all the time. I went by and just thought, what am I going to do about this? Uh, you know, so I connected with them and just thought that, you know, maybe we should have an academy. Because what I think is missing at times is that, that they were not opportune to be mentored, to mold them, and at times they make mistakes that's not of their fault. You know, Nikola Hamlo. So I thought that okay, some of us, you know, that have been lucky enough to have been mentored. And seeing the results of what is here today, you know, if you say, okay, that was successful. He draws this right, he draws this right. You know, Shola or Kupasa Majawa. There's a reason for it. I mean, if you take two kids and put them in the desert, you know, within the Arabs, they will only come out when you speak Arabs and what they do there. You know, same thing. You take them to Kumuji, they will do the same thing. Or you take them to Washington. I mean, that, that's quite obvious. So I think, really, looking at the development of this country, um, that's what I think this generation owes to it. That once we transition, there needs to be a successful plan at every level. You know, at least throw to them, expose them to do core values of leadership. Now, beyond that, I mean, the the program, we start, it's a year's program, and here it's very democratic. Here is worse than high park or worse. I don't get this on my own. So first, we debated one, punctuality. So everybody accepts that we start at 12. And we end at two. And then, you know, we uh, had to agree on the best date, the best time. It was debated, you know? So it's a consensus. And once it's a consensus, we expect the whole part. And so far, so good. This is our, what, sixth lecture now? Yes. This is the sixth one, and you can see that. I mean, people come here and say they're impressed. They never see things like this in this country. Does this exist? Does it exist? But I think I throw it back to them. I think they've been doing extremely well. They are committed, and I can see future presidents. Let's let them raise his hand, the future president of this country. <laughs> now we have more. <laughs> now we have more. You know, we can see presidents, we can see business tycoons, we can see, you know, social um, uh, leaders. So, so, so really, for me, that's my vision. I feel that if I have been successful, I mean, I don't want to pass on my legacy and thinking, oh, tough, oh, he left this big house and this big hotel and big car, no, 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 no. I want to be assessed on how many I reproduce, good leaders. And on plan and on track, what we're doing is that these, they will, be, they will graduate by January, by December. And actually, out of their own initiative, they want to produce a book of all these lectures. So then it will be passed on. And you know, and, and the game plan is that when they go out of here, they talk to their peers. So it multiplies. You know, and then next year, actually, we're, we're hitting 300. You know, man, I don't think so. I mean, because we're successful 50, next year we're going to have 300 fellows. 
And uh, we've targeted um, every term to be amphitheater, you know, better organized. And then the, the biggest of all is that in the next five years, I think we need to produce 1,000 people like this. So now imagine in the next five years that we have 1,000 fellows, even if we have 50% success story, 50%, 500 people like yourselves in key leadership positions. Over time, maybe in the next 10 years, we'll see a different guy. But what I did it, genocide happened. 20, 20 years ago, today it is the cleanest city in the world. It is not in Africa. I actually, I, you know, I go there all the time. I work, I spend quality there. When I walk in the street, I look for dirt, for cigarette tips. You don't find them. And you don't find people cleaning the street and putting a bullet and diverting the traffic. You don't see the cleaners. Discipline, good policies. You know, uh, they've got the Kigali Investment, um, uh, uh, no, Kigali Innovation City. Carnegie uh, Mellon. Mm. They have a campus there. The CEO is 32 years old, a lady. So when I say that, look, we know what we want. That's what can I do. I know what I want. I knew I came from there. You know, I have a very young population. 70% of the Kigali, of the Rwanda population, are only in the third. threat. So can you imagine? So they want to know exactly what they want. Rwanda is coffee. I was talking to my youth boy here. He's a sophisticated youth boy. Yesterday. And the story of Rwandish coffee in China now, the demand is higher than the supply. So just imagine, this, this can happen to us. We can do it. So on that note, I'm so fired up. I've got guys who will talk much more than me. Um, so I introduce now um, uh, Mr. Shola Mohori. Shola doesn't want the formal introduction. It's freestyle. Goes to his own way. So Mr. Mohori, the floor is yours. I mean, he will tell you what he wants to do. Then we'll take it off from there. Thank you. Thank you. Now, thanks very much for that introduction. Let me start off by explaining why it is that I wanted to do a self-introduction. I have attended at least one of these before. I've also viewed a couple of them on video, on YouTube. And usually Tuff comes out and gives a really glowing introduction, details what this person has done, and you begin to understand that, wow, you know, we're sitting in front of Maybe not greatness, but a, a great professional, and we, we should be here. I have to say that in my own case, I must say my achievements are a little more modest. I was a, I, I, I describe myself right now as semi retired, but not tired, okay? That's kind of where I am. I see myself sort of in the same age group as uh, a staff, but a little bit younger, but I just crossed the, the milestone of 60. And I started off my, my professional career working in the civil service here in the Gambia. I was actually, for my sins, in the president's office. And then after that, I found my way. I went off to do my master's. While I was doing my master's, uh, Mr. Jamer decided to step into the sea. And I ended up moving on to another career. I became a banker. So I was a banker for about 20 years. And I came back four years ago and decided, well, my mom's here, she's 90 years old now, eyesight failing, let me see what I can do. I'll stick around here and see if I can make a success of my, the rest of the next stage of my life. So that, that, that's why I'm here. You kind of wonder, well, okay, so you've got me down as Shola Mahuni here speaking on good communicator. What does he bring to the table? What are my credentials? Because what you might be looking for, right, is a guy with a master's in mass communications. You might look for somebody who has studied the subject, who is a, a, a real pro, or somebody who's actually working in the field of journalism or what else it might be as um, a public relations officer. I'm none of those things. But I think what, what qualifies me, if I can be so bold as to say, what qualifies me to be in this position is that I've got some great hair, so I've been around the block a couple of times, right? So I have a little bit of experience. And I have made plenty of mistakes in my life. Plenty of mistakes. And in fact, if I knew then what I knew now, what I know now, you know, you guys wouldn't even be seeing me. I wouldn't be, you know, I'd be someplace else. I would have been far more successful. But that, that's the nature of all of us, right? 
we learn from our mistakes, but we always learn looking backwards. And hopefully what we are going to be able to do in the context of this academy is to be able to share with you. We don't tell you we made the mistakes, usually we just show it to you as like insights that we've got these perceptive ideas of how to move forward. But usually it's because we have made mistakes in the past and we have now realized that hey, this is not money. I would have done it this way, or I should have listened to that guy who was saying X, Y, and Z to me. So I just want to, so my own credentials are first of all that I'm old enough to have made a few mistakes and to have a bit of experience that I think is going to be worthwhile sharing with you. The other reason is that I consider myself a keen fan and or observer of communication. It's something that I find fascinating. It's something that I've been following. By yeah, yeah. It's something that I, I find fascinating. It's something that I enjoy. I certainly believe that communication is an extremely powerful tool for all of us. And I also believe that we will continue, we can continue to develop our skills as, a, as communicators. As I look back over my life, there are times when I have communicated very well and it gets you places. There are times when you don't do the communication very well and where you should be doesn't happen, it holds you back. And so there's no doubt in my mind that communication is a very important skill, a tool to have. And certainly in my life, I have I've certainly experienced that. So that, that, that's first of all, my view on, on why communication is important. The other things that I've done in my life, I, I listen to radio a lot. You might say, well, big deal, so we, we all do. But when I listen to radio, I'm always fascinated at how well people who are communicating on the radio are able to draw you into their story, right? So that's something else that I do. And in fact, by the way, now I think about it, the other thing that I do, uh, you know, when you get into retirement, you start doing things that you never had time to do when you were working. I actually volunteer for a, at a radio station. Cyprus and radio. Uh, if you if you listen to Hot FM, I'm afraid you will have heard me reading obituary announcements, which is not necessarily the most glamorous of things, but hey, it's one of the things that I have done. But the, the reality is that when you get into radio, you begin to realize again the power of communication. You realize how important it is. And so that, that's something else that has helped build up my own consciousness and awareness of the importance of communication. A couple of other things I could tell you about. When I was in the president's office, I, it was a terrible job, but I, I wrote a lot of speeches, you know, writing speeches for the president. Uh, he's got to go open Atlantic Hotel, you write the speech. State opening the parliament, you write the speech. So, to some extent, when it comes to speech writing, which is also a form of communication, I got a bit of experience there too. A couple of other things that I could, I could mention either the problem. Oh yes, uh, yes. I'm also I see, uh, I see I see my good friend Sal here. I'm also a member of a club called the Toastmasters Club. And Toastmasters Club is just a group of us that got together because we are interested and determined to do what we can to improve our public speaking ability. So I'm part of that, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. So essentially, this is kind of what qualifies me, if I can use that term, to be standing here lecturing to you. It's interesting because as I was meeting a couple of guys here, they were saying, oh, okay, yeah, you're the lecturer. what do you lecture in? So I then had to admit that no, I'm not a lecturer, I never have lectured. This is probably, in fact, the first time I'm standing in front of a group of, what have we got here, close to 40, 50 people, talking about a subject for which I really have no formal training, but I'm looking at it not as a lecture, but as an opportunity to share with you my own insights, my own experience, and hopefully let me just deliver a couple of tips that you will pick up and which will make your job as communicators a little bit easier. That's kind of my hope. So, and I think perhaps I want to also say that this is a, it'll sound odd to you maybe, but this is a real privilege for me, I have to say. It's a privilege to be part of this whole TAF Leadership Academy thing. Uh, I just, I'm not quite sure why my Taf invited me in, but he certainly gave me the opportunity and I immediately said, okay, yeah, I'm up for it. And I, of, of all the 
opportunities or the, the subjects that were available, the one that I chose was a good communicator because it is the area that I'm most interested in. <clears throat> so first of all, hats off. Thank you, first of all, for the invitation. Hats off also to TAF, I mean, and, and to you guys, for this amazing initiative. When I graduated from university, was that uh, I came back in 1980. You know, there, there's nothing like this. It, it just you just wouldn't be able to do this kind of stuff. So, uh, okay, so, but I think it's just a, a wonderful initiative. One that the, the TAF has come up with, and two, you know, hats off for you guys. For, for taking the step forward and pushing him and asking him for this and really engaging with it as, as fully as you are. I think it's a, real, it's, it's a really good and positive sign for those of us in my age group who are thinking, well, where is the Gambia going? <clears throat> with guys like you, with this kind of interest, this drive, this, this passion. I think, you know, we're on to a good thing. I think this, this bodes well for the future. I hope that you know, I see faces here. It is quite possible, I'm sure, we will run into each other in and around Bandu. For sure, I will not remember your name. I might not even recognize your face. So please don't take that personally. What I like to encourage people to do is please, you can see me on the street, stop me and say, yeah, Mr. Moni, we recognize you. You were the one who were at this lecture on good communication. I want to, I'm very keen on developing this relationship, and hopefully, you never know, it could grow into something better, something even bigger. That this is not just a one-shot deal for me. I'm only speaking here for today for a couple of hours, but hopefully, Gambia's a small place, we will be running into each other from time to time, and I hope, therefore, this is just the first, first stage, first step, if you will, in our, uh, our longer-term relationship. <clears throat> I thought I'd start off with a few ground rules just to let you know what I'm going to be doing today and how I'm going to be delivering. <clears throat> First of all, I have to confess, I have no lecture. I'm afraid this is the best I have. I just have a few, uh, a few notes on pieces of paper that I'm going to use to kind of guide what I'm saying. There is no presentation. You know, I know some past speakers have come with slide presentations. I didn't realize that was necessarily required. <clears throat> and now I hear that you guys are going to be producing a book. I'm not sure how we'll do this, but we'll find a way. But apologies, first of all, because I don't have any of that. So this is all I have in terms of notes and no printouts. It's not really a lecture. So what I want to do, as I may have said already, is to make this as interactive as possible, right? That, that's what I'd like to do. And I know you're sitting there thinking, OK, let's sit back and hear what Mr. Mahoney has to say about good communication. I can assure you that from where I'm sitting, I'm also kind of keen to hear what you guys, at your level, in your generation, what your perspective is on the subject of good communicator. Because the reality is that you know we grew up back in the, 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 the 60s and the 70s, and when we were young professionals, good communication meant a certain thing. Part of that is still relevant today, but there are new forms of communication, social media, the whole works, and the things that I've seen um, <clears throat> just hanging out with, uh, <clears throat> with my good friend, uh, Asan Asutek, the stuff guys are doing. The, you can make your own videos, you can send out podcasts, there are all sorts of things that you can do, and some of you are probably doing right now, that are very different from what we used to do when we were your age. So, I. In terms of how we, we run this program today, what I want to do is, look, it, it's, it, it's open. Uh, I want it to be an ongoing question and answer session. I will make it interactive, right? At times, if you, if you have a question, a burning question, please don't hesitate to put your hand up and stop me. I have no problem stopping and listening. And if it's if a question we can push to later, I will tell you so. And so, but, but, but don't hold back. The other thing is that, I'm conscious of the fact that I, I don't necessarily, maybe my accent is just a little bit unusual for Gambia. And so you might be thinking, yeah, where's this guy from? If you can't understand me, first of all, do put your hand up if I'm speaking too fast and let me know. But the uh, accent notwithstanding, we'll let you get enough. Why Gambia? You know, and I, 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 I grew up part of the time I grew up here. <clears throat> and so I. <clears throat> And so, you know, I, I have 
certainly a passion for what's happening in this country and a passion about moving it forward. I was going to say, as far as cell phones are concerned, you know, usually you can get to these things and guys say, turn up your cell phones. No problem, you can keep your cell phones on. Just, if you could, just keep them on vibrate so they don't disturb. Now I find that in this day and age of the smartphone, it's sometimes useful to, for people to have their smartphone because one of the important things is when you are communicating like Katie like this, you want to make sure that everybody's with you, right? Everybody's following you. But you can always tell that you're losing them when people start saying, oh, well, I don't want to change my Facebook player. So the minute I see, so it's a, it's a good indicator for me. If I see people picking up their smartphone and looking for messages, then I'll know that I'm losing you and I need to inject a little more energy. So please, uh, and of course you may have important calls and I can understand that. So I think I've already said this is, this is not a course, not a lecture as such. I hope it will be something of a just a, a bit of an experience uh, for you, but also for me. And it's, it's a bit of a, an experiment for me in the sense that I've not done this before, but I, from what I've seen of this group, both online and the time I was here, I think it can generate the kind of energy and lots of learning that will certainly benefit me and hopefully benefit you. Just by way of background, I want to go back to how did I start preparing for this? I talked to to Taff uh, several weeks ago about public speaking. And I was asking Taff how he, what his style is, and different people have different styles. And he says, well, for him, and he clearly has no issues and no qualms and no issues about public speaking, he said the way he does it is, first of all, to understand who is in his audience. So he needs to know who he's going to be talking to, and then he can quickly figure out how to pitch the speech or the remarks. And it occurred, it occurred to me, it sounds kind of obvious, right? But it's actually fairly insightful. Because when you're thinking communication, if you're talking to somebody who only speaks German, no, no point speaking in Mandinka, right? Yeah. You, you've got to get on the same page, you've got to be speaking the right language. So I'm a little bit nervous here, you know, I'm speaking like a 60-year-old guy, I'm looking at folks who are 20s and 30s. Hopefully, I'll be able to find the right meter band or the right wavelength so that we can connect. But that, for me, was a comment that has informed me. And so when I heard that and I started thinking about preparing for this thing, I did what I've already said. I thought, well, okay, let me come here and attend one of these sessions. I came here and I attended and I have a, a bit of a sense of the kind of energy levels that I see here. I know we've got a couple of, when I was here, I think there was like two guys who were wanting to be president, I see we've moved up to six, which is all good. So I think things are moving in the right direction. I've listened to a, a couple of video clips on, uh, uh, online. I've learned about the Johari window. Who's the Johari window guy? Yeah, that's the good yeah, the Johari window. Yeah. I have learned what other speakers have focused on in terms of leadership. And I'm going to try my best to, to link in with some of those concepts so that this thing doesn't look like it's like I'm coming in from outer space. It should really all be ideally, uh, if not seamless, an integrated approach and you should be able to see how everything connects together. So that, that's how I've been working on this thing. The other thing I did was to talk to Fabi Deng, who's your coordinator, get a, get a bit of a sense of the profile of the students here. And I got here earlier, there were some folks who were here earlier, I've, I've talked to a few people. Pleased to see we got novelists in here. You were uh, poets and novelists, yes. people who write novels. Yeah. I wouldn't single them out, but that, that also, at one stage, I thought that I was going to be a writer of some sort. My uncle was a great writer, Dr. Lenny Peters. I have a great respect for people who are able to write and convince you and draw you into a particular story. And let's face it, that too is an important part of the communication. And so, this is giving you the background, this is kind of how I started thinking about pulling together this session. But of course there's one missing piece, and that's to know what your expectations are. So, you know, they've told you that you've got a guest lecture at your home. Oh, by the way, just a small correction here. This is, the spelling of my name is S-O-L-A, just so you know, but the pronunciation is indeed S-A. I'm quite happy with S H O L A because I don't want people calling me Shola. The real name is Shola Mahoney, but just yeah, just so you know. So, uh, as I was saying, as 
where I was, again, one of the things I haven't found out is, what are you guys expecting? Yeah, you see this guy, Sean Mahoney, where's Mahoney's Mahoney are these? Yeah, good communicator. Is he a lecturer at UTG? No, he's not. Has he ever lectured in good communication? No, he hasn't. What, what are your expectations? What would you like to hear? And by the way, I'm not saying that whatever you say I will deliver. I just want to hear what you have. Maybe it fits in with what I plan to deliver. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe I can answer a couple of questions. But any thoughts as to, does anybody want to, just keep, show of hands, does anyone want to tell me what you are expecting from this lecture today? Okay, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Sure. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yeah. But we are pleased to receive you in this gathering. Yeah. And I think you asked a very important question. Yeah. First of all, which is what we are expecting as individuals. Great. What we are expecting on today's lecture. But to start with myself, yeah. I would say we are expecting you will come here today and tell us what the good communication is all about. Okay. Two, what are the elements that fuse together to make a good communication? Very good. I personally, these are the things that I'm expecting from you today. That's good. Thank you. Okay. I hear you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else uh, want to add to that? Yeah, madam, please, go ahead. Yeah, feel free, you don't need to stand up, it's okay, yeah, I'll do the stand. Ah. I expect, I expect to learn how to become a good communicator. It's good you can you can stand up, so I don't want to see you. Say it again. And she expects to learn how to become a good communicator. Very good. It's a big point. I'm, I'm not picking on you, but I just want to sh share something with you about communication. I, one of the things I do, yeah, I sit in meetings, I, I chair a couple of boards. And when you chair a board, you have a team of board members and people put up their hand and they make comments. And in a situation such as we are in, in the Gambia, invariably, there will be very few women in the boardroom. But go ahead. Um. First of all, I think uh, it would not be fair if we don't give my brother a fitting introduction. <laughs> I, have to, I, have to, I have to take liberty because I think one thing we don't do in Gap is celebrate people. And, um, and Shola is an outstanding Gambian citizen. And he's so humble that he didn't tell me that he's an alumni of Colombia and Harvard. Yes, he is. I mean, he has, he has, he has that. He actually. He's, he's a very successful international banker. He's, he's been uh, at high senior level. Citibank, Stanley, and Barclays. Have I lied? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think it's important. Yeah, I think, I think it's important. For, you think you're on Garmin, you know that this humble Garmin has risen to that level. Yet he stands here in such humility. He doesn't even want to talk about it. Because he wants to just connect. But I think it's also fair that I say he's back. Yes. I think you're wrong about plus. Yes. 
But I also, I also want to make it a Yeah, you tell them the story. The first day you're going to have it. You know, those events, those events are not going to be good. But I think it's okay. great that you can hear that story. Yeah. Uh, 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 let me do that to the back. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do that towards the end. Yeah. Okay, by the way, by the way, as a poll, so let's just tap on. I'm going to come to my bed. Jibo, Jibo, Jibo. He's also the current chairman of Gamtel and Gitiba. Yes, I'm not sure. I've seen Hassan do this kind of stuff. 
I've seen he's got a friend of colleague of his, Waka, who, who's doing podcasts. I wouldn't have thought about this kind of stuff. So the reason I raise this is that when we start talking about the how, I intend to learn from you guys too, right? Because you are the millennial. You guys are millennials. Is that what's that their official title? Millennials. <laughs> Anyway, you are very different from what, where I am, and you, you are the digital age, and you will be able to school me, and I'll be able to pick up some tips, because, you know what, I, I have to say I'm still very much in the game. I, at least I intend to be in the game. A, a lot of folks kind of feel that, ah, I feel negative in the I, I have a lot of colleagues who I was in the civil service with, first service with, you know, they're in their 60s, when I ask them, say, yeah, well, how's it going? What are you up to? Ah, wait. Yeah, man, get on, man. Yeah, wake up in the morning, you bring a tire, go see the boys, and so forth. I gotta say, my approach is a little bit different. My approach is a little bit different, not because I want to crowd out youngsters like you, but I just generally feel, I honestly feel, that life cannot stop these days at 60. Let me preach a little bit for you, I'm sorry about this, but just in case you have parents that are my age, and if you have parents who are thinking that they're just about to to hang out their boots, as it were, they're going to retire and just sit and relax every day. Not a good way to go. Not a good way to go because these days we are living longer as individuals. No longer is the situation where you retire at 60 and 65 or so, you, you can't move, you, you pass away. No, you can live all the way to 90. And the worst thing that can happen is that your brain starts to slow down. And so I would encourage anybody of my age, and I keep telling you folks that don't think about retiring. Nobody should retire at 60 and you stop doing everything. No, retiring should be a gradual process. So you go from working 40, 50 hours a week, you bring that down maybe to 30 hours a week, legally ling then you're down to 20, so that by the time you're 70, I, I spoke to a friend just yesterday, 70 years old, they are, they've just taken on the role as CEO of the Housing Association, in Detroit. So, you know, people are doing that in the States and they're not any smarter or any more active or healthier than we are. So I just need to put that plug in. So, let me just jump right in. Where are we now? Yeah, time is going. I need to move on. My thoughts about leadership. For me, a couple of things. For me, leadership is an art, not a science. And I don't know if you understand that message, what I mean by that. What I mean by that is that there's no one way to do leadership. There are different ways to do good leadership. And your approach may be very different from mine. And it's all good. You can still be a good leader and be very different from me. I can be an effective leader in a different sense. So leadership, and I can't just tell you that if you do X plus Y plus Z, you will immediately become a good leader. There are different ways. It is an art, and we need to develop and understand that art. I also believe that leadership, or becoming a good leader, this is a lifelong journey. This is an important point for me. I have heard debates between people your age, maybe people of mine, and uh, I'll hear the young, young folks saying, hey, look, no, we're already leaders. You know, we're not the leaders of tomorrow, we're the leaders of today. And yeah, I also hear people on, it's on a tap group or YouTube saying, no, yeah, then you pay it by the way. Then we need to step in. These guys have had their turn. But I want to, I want to, to recall a concept I think that was raised here, I believe by Nijai, and it's the idea of being intergenerational. And by intergenerational, I think that is the only way to go. Because for sure, trust me, I may not sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I have things that I can share with you. And maybe your parents don't think so, but for sure you guys have things that you can share with me that I can learn. And I think that the only way forward for Gambia and any other society is to take full advantage of the resources that we all have. And we need to learn from each other. And hopefully, you know, when you guys go home, you will be sharing things with your folks and teaching them certain things. I, I speak because I'm in a situation where I live with my mom who's 90, I'm 60, I hang out with folks like, you know, Asana Vasantek or people like yourself. And so I'm in between three generations. And I really think that that is the only way to go. So it, it is a lifelong journey. And if you think back, I bet if you ask Taf, the leader he is today is different from the leader he was two, 
two years ago. There are things that you learn, you keep learning. I can assure you that myself, there are things that I'm picking up every day that hopefully I'm able to incorporate into my leadership style that will make me a better leader. <clears throat> and then I want to remind us that leadership is not, is not static. Um, and by that I mean, it's not as if once you become a leader, all you do is lead. I think throughout our lives, even as we speak, you are probably a leader in some situations, you are a follower in others. I don't know if, that, if anybody's feeling me on, on that point. That, that, let me, let me get, get a few examples, because I, it's clear to me that some of us are already leaders. And you may not be the best leader you could be, but you really want to try to become an even better leader. But would you say, does that sound, does that resonate with you? Does that seem to make sense that as a leader, you are a leader at some point, but you're also a follower, you, 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 are, you have a leader? Does that, I'm wondering if that point makes sense to anybody, that, that, that you can be both a leader and a follower, and it's not as if, you know, once you're a leader, you are always a leader. I give President Obama, when he was in the White House, I'm sure he's a leader when he sits around the table. Yeah, he's a big dog for sure. He gets on the basketball, he's, you know, he's playing hoops with some of the boys from Golden State. Trust me, he's not a leader. And uh, it, it's the same for, for, for a lot of us. If you are, you, 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 you're married, you're at home, a young husband, even a wife, you are a manager, a leader in your home in certain respects. Maybe in the office you're not. And uh, I think it's just important for us to, to recognize that. And just, just take note of that, that, hey, this leadership thing, I am already a leader. I may not be president of the student body, but there are places in my life where I am leading, and I'm expected to lead, and people are looking up to me. I see people nodding their heads. I wonder if I can, anybody want to just give me an example of the leadership position that they are in right now? Yes, sir, please. What, what, what do you, what's your leadership position right now? I'm the president of the science students. President of the science students, okay. Let me ask you the other side. In what situation are you a follower? Yeah, as of now. In, we have a nationwide board. Right. And in that, we have a chairperson. Okay. Of the nationwide board. Correct. I am a coordinator, so I am the That's what I'm talking about. Okay, well, we're on track. Okay, good. Thank you very much. <coughs> and perhaps the last point I wanted to make was the one I made a little bit ago. Well, one of the last points was the authority versus leadership. We all need to, to bear that in mind, especially in Gambia, by the way. We're, we're, we can be a bit fickle uh, in Gambia. We're going to go to class. So, what for sure, we're a minister of the year in the Bangladesh. But the next day, they announced that, yes, his uh, election to the president by the past president him has been finished. <laughs> 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 You know, they see you on the street, yeah, 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 and they're gone. So just remember, as you go up the scale, as you go up the ladder, and you, you are sitting in leadership positions, just try to remind yourself that, yeah, sometimes the, the, the respect that I'm getting as a leader is because of this position, not because of me. And trust me, the place you want to be is the kind of leader where if they took you out of the out of office, Nevertheless, people are going to be coming, come here to your house and say, yeah, it's more like book. I'll follow this guy wherever. So just bear that in mind. The other thing I want to say is that, in terms of, again, it's all about my philosophy and a couple of principles, is that we already know a lot. We feel that, some of you may be thinking that we're fairly young, uh, you're just learning, but if you look around, and if you become more aware, you've asked me questions about communication, you'll be amazed at how many of those answers are right within you. And I say that because when you think about communication, there are all sorts of books that you, know, you can manage and speak and so forth about communication. But the reality is, if you have to wanted to learn about communication, not a better place than the Gambia, because we are a very verbal uh, people. This is a place where you're always talking to folks. You go to London, you walk into the tube, you don't have to say anything. You can sit in the tube for an hour and not talk to anybody. In the Gambia, you can't do that. You step into a taxi here from the New York. If you want to get something done, you just you don't just go up to the club and say, give me this here. I'll do the weekend, how things. 
and go, I'll give you this kind of thing. And that's the way you get things done. So communication is really an essential and important part of our culture here. And I would encourage you to think about that because that really is an advantage that we have. You may not be quite as comfortable in English, okay, or if it's not your, your first language, but I can guarantee you when you think back to the way things work, or the way you talk to an elder uh, from the village as opposed to how you talk to you know, your colleague in the office, it's, it's all very different. That's all got to do with, with how we communicate. I mentioned to you, I think I mentioned that I, I believe that I'm still in the game, but I also believe that learning for me, just as leadership, is a lifelong thing. So I just can, I, I want to continue to develop myself. And I think we're all a bit like that. I'm, I'm not quite at the stage where I'm just going to sit back and, and lie on a hammock uh, sort of eight hours a day. So I'm looking to, to, to develop myself. And one of the things I've done is to sign up for this, this group called Toastmasters. And Toastmasters is all about learning and helping each other develop our public speaking ability. And I want to introduce a bit of a game here, okay? When I knew I was coming out here, I checked my bank balance, and I threw up. I wasn't quite sure if I was going to be able to keep everybody's attention for the full two hours. So far, it's going pretty well. But I thought, look, if I put some, bring some cash into the game, that it might help, it might help, as it were, focus the attention. One of the things that we do in, in Toastmasters, they tell you their, their rule is that the most effective public speakers avoid what they call space fillers. And the space filler is the um and the you know. I'm going to get going, yeah, yeah, um, we do this and you know, I want to do this and you know. And if you listen to TV, by the way, it's a terrible thing to learn this because nowadays, whenever I watch CNN, thinking, oh, Christian, I'm on board, this must have a woman. She's doing arms all over the place. And I catch myself, and so one of the, the challenges I'm taking on is, so the communication has to be the two-way thing. You are transmitting a message, and as far as I think we're concerned, communication takes place when they receive that message in the way that you intend. For me, I think that, that, that's communication. Here, go ahead, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah. Uh, I would define communication this way, like a transfer of information from the sender through a medium to the recipient. The sender will encode the message, send it to the recipient. The recipient will, uh, the, the, the sender will send a coding message right. to the recipient, and the recipient will encode it and interpret the information. Then, if there is a need for the sender to understand whether the recipient has understood his message, then the recipient will send back the message and like a feedback for the sender to understand okay. whether the message which has been passed is understood. The medium is also very important. It depends on the type of people that you are communicating to. You send a different medium to those type of people. Yes, good. Are you a scientist? What, what field are you in? Science. Oh, yes, yes. Are you the minister? What's your portfolio? Was. 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 communication is the conveying the message or transferring the message and the receiver having an understanding of what the message means. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Does anybody, can anybody add to that? Because I just want to pretty much there. Go ahead, sir. <coughs> Thank you for that. Yes, communication is about conveying message and information. But there is one in our mind who called uh, Henry Ferrer. He Henry? said, Henry Ferrer. No, okay. He said that the transfer of message or information Define communication as part effective, for example, effective communication. Yes. He said effective communication is the transfer of information from the sender to the receiver in exactly the same way as expressed or intended by the sender. <coughs> so it's not just about the transfer of a message, but let the recipient of the information, the 
encode the information in exactly as the way the sender encodes. Thank you. I think that's right. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, thank you. However, um, some time ago I did forensic psychology. And forensic psychology? Yes, yes. So, I want to. Um, what he said. Okay. I just want to define it. Sure. Um, so when you're communicating to someone, it does not essentially mean that you have to say exactly what they said. You have to say it based on how you understand what they said. Because the human brain is structured in a way that the human brain cannot capture exactly how things are said. For example, if you tell me something today and tomorrow you want me to repeat the same thing, I cannot exactly say what you say. I am going to say it based on how my brain is able to interpret it. Okay. That is how I'm able to explain it. Okay. So I'm not saying you are supposed to differ from what they said. No. I'm trying to say that if someone says something to you, right. you cannot interpret it word by word or exactly the same thing. Like okay. you are going to interpret based on how you understand it. I think I understand that. I don't think that's necessarily different. I think I would agree with the gentleman at the back because I think his point was in an ideal world, the best form of communication is when I say A, you hear, hear A, and you interpret A, and when you interpret A, that A interpretation is what I mean. It, uh, I, but, but I think, we, yeah, please, go ahead. Can I come in with some example? You know me, I like giving stories. Okay, please. Yeah, I'll give you my story to come in. Communication. And this is an example I had about 15 years ago. I traveled and I bought Quink Ink. Yes. They wouldn't know Quink Ink. They sound Quink was like the Rolls Royce of ink <laughs> in fountain pen. Yes. So, you know, I bought this Quink ink because I had a fountain I inherited from my father. And he used to use Quink ink. Yes. So I put this ink, but you know ink, ink never saw. You will forget it to her or you will, will spill somewhere. You know, ink. Yeah. So um, I protected it all the way. I think I came from Malaysia. And then, you know, it came in somehow there was a leakage, you know, and I wanted it clean. I mean, what leaked yes. around the bottom. So I called Sharif, my, 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 my house boy. He was there at the office. I said, Sharif, please, go clean this for me. He's from his Liberia. <laughs> so, I, so I gave him the bottle. We had some ink that spilled. Guess what happened? <laughs> when he came back, I could see through the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> he just went and spilled all the ink because for him, it's something dirty. Yes. So he, he, he went and spilled all the ink, washed the bottle, clean, <laughs> and went back. <laughs> Communication, fantastic. What I meant and what this guy heard. Yeah. And I think probably this is my main, but I'm not back of that. Yeah. Sorry. Just on the back of that, that relates to, uh, I think, a comment made a little earlier, which is you need to understand what this is. your comment. You need to understand who you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So if you have to do that again, you think, hey, kid, if I give him this thing, he may misunderstand. So let me break it down to him to say, look, I need the stuff inside, you can just clean the outside. So once again, we were talking about what are, the, what are the tips, what are the rules about good communication. You need to understand who you're communicating with. You need to understand their mindset and how their mind operates. Because then you can think to yourself, well, if I say A plus B here, they may interpret it incorrectly. And just imagine, the same message you want to deliver, will be different depending on the audience. And, and, and that's so if you were talking to me, presumably you'd be able to explain that without you going into those details. But yes, sorry, go ahead. Sir. Yeah, to, to support that, uh, there is one example that I want to cite when I was in the junior school. Okay. Um, I was actually learning to become a tailor. And my boss once asked me a question. We were sitting down and he said, Lalo, you are a very intelligent student. I want to ask you a question. I wanted to say this to someone, but I can't say it. I said, okay, go on. Actually, he said, look, he said, okay, how do you say man orchid? For example, in Maninga, in the Sunna, man orchid. Uh -huh. How do you say this? I sat down for about two hours, I could not come up with, with, a, with, a, with a fitting solution. And still now, I can't find a way to replace this whole phrase. Okay. And I'm going to try to help. But then, to ease up the whole thing, I told you that, oh, just tell him that I be faster. He said, I be faster. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, but then he, he, he tried to disagree with me. I told him, just go ahead and, and do it. Then he went there and told the man, okay, you know what? You know, man, man order, I be faster. The man looked at him and said, what? Then he tried to emphasize on it. And in the end, the man understood and said, okay. He wanted to mean that you were fasting, for example. 
So the man has to realize they have been So it's about understanding exactly as you intend. Okay, so I would want to come because we get the answer to that. Yeah. One more time. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get to that later. So I think that the point is, is well taken and well understood. So you want to add to that? No. Okay. I just want to say something. If yeah, I'm not please. wrong, please. Yeah. If I'm not wrong, I think there are there are two sides here when we talk about communication. Okay. Because there could be a communication, but there will not be an effective communication. If you look at the two things that they are talking about, one is talking about effective communication and the other one is just talking about a communication. Mm -hmm. So there could be a communication where there would be no effective communication. Okay. But when we talk about good communication, you, you, your message, the information that you said, it has to be effective communication where you need to get feedback from the person that you sent the information. Yeah. So that, I think uh, I'll buy that. So essentially, Tap in his example with, uh, with Shirif, oh, he was communicating all right. Oh yeah, he communicated a message. Did the guy hear a message? Yeah, the guy heard a message. A, a very different message from what Tuff was trying to communicate. But I think your point is right. What we are, by the way, focusing on here is all about good and effective communication. That, that really is, let's just take that as the rule of thumb. That's what we are focusing on. Sorry, I'm uh, not time to be. It's about five minutes past one now. I, I'm seeing that. Yes, so just to... Yeah, indeed. Well, by the way, there's not much more I am going to speak on, it's going to be a lot more of yeah. what, I, what I want to suggest I mean, is, yeah. um, if, if you go in front of me for the next, say, 15 minutes, yeah. and right. I'll bring Paul to comment on everything. I'm sure he's now... Correct. Sure. So, okay. so okay. Good. Let me pass, sure. and then we'll probably get to Fair enough. Fair enough. And by the way, I would like to take 10 minutes towards the end. Okay, fine. Right. 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 Yes. Yeah. Very so good. you have another, let's say, 10 minutes. Another 10 minutes. Okay, fair enough. So, one of the things I wanted to ask is, now that we, we understand what good, com what effective communication is all about, anybody want to share with me why you think it's important or why we think it would be important in the context of leadership? Slightly obvious. Yeah, please go ahead. Good um, afternoon again. Uh, I think it is important in the context of uh, leadership is because you are actually interacting with people. And in effective and good communication, first you need to ask yourself questions because you are leading people. Now you're talking to someone and then you need to sort of ask yourself an invisible question. Mm -hmm. Say, how would a person uh, react if I say this kind of a thing? And in, in, in that, the choice of words that you speak to the person matters mm -hmm. because some leaders would be abusive in the way they talk and they wouldn't realize that they are abusive in their language. Some would be in, invariable in their, 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 their discourse. And also in communication, the most important effect that we should get to understand is the privacy. Uh, sorry, let me just get it. It is the privacy, it is sense effect. Now this effect, in, in short, simply means that people tend to, to uh, get what you said last yes. than what you have said in the beginning. Sure. So sure. Th that's why it's important sure. now when you're speaking, it's important that your beginning is very strong yes. and in the ending, it's also very strong. Yes. Now coming back to why it is important, because you need some uh, people to do something. You are leading people towards a particular vision that you want them to get. Now, if you don't communicate effectively, it's a problem. Like Uncle Tax uh, Tuff's example there. He has sent Sheriff to go do something, but at the end of the day, what is the result of what he has asked Sheriff to do? I'm just using that as a question. No, no, sure. I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it. I wanted to say something. Oh, please. Yeah. Uh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And then I believe people are more interested in results. I'm a keen follower of people who do public speaking and communication. So I oh, right. actually learned a little and then I want to share it. I'll give her an example right now right. of a scenario. I might be, let's say I'm an event planner. Mm -hmm. I go to her place and then I meet someone who's planning on getting married. Right. 
I know this person. I'm going to tell you, this is what I do. I'm an event planner. I know you're having a wedding. Can you? But then I might also decide to take another approach. Right. I'll come to you and say, you know, as a result of what I do, I create memories, a lasting wedding that's going to match your story and all of that. Do you know someone who's planning on getting the same experience? Mm -hmm. So the way that person is going to react to me, who's who structured the the how to call it the communication or who structured that discussion around that and reframe all of the sentences and putting what is more important first. Okay. That attention you're trying yes. to catch. And the other person who's going to say the same thing but in a different way. Like having a lengthy introduction, oh I have a company, it's head, we do and we do this and we do that and then you leave out the fact that the person you're talking to is actually interested in. I think that's good. I think I don't know if you, you, everybody heard that, but essentially, if I can try to encapsulate the, the comment there, that very often it's you trying to get a message across. How you get that message across is, is key because sometimes you can be talking for ten minutes and you lose people. So you've got to figure out what that message is, and you figure out where in your discussion you put it. Sometimes you put it up front, maybe 30 seconds in, you say, look, this is what I'm trying to do. And rather than I want to sell you this, I want to help you create a memory so that you can remember and share with your grandkids. So that's absolutely right in terms of marketing. Sorry, sir. How am I doing? Have like five minutes left? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. The most important aspect of leadership, I think, is communication. And the reason for that is you may not be the smartest person in the room. This is why you have ministers, you have permanent secretaries, you have everybody. But you are the face of a government, the face of a country. When you speak, the people should be able to listen to you and you will be able to capture the audience that is before you. Let me give you an example here. President Obama, uh, not Obama, what's his name? Arwabaro had a press conference. Everybody was listening. They were supposed to talk about the national development agenda. The only thing that people remembered from that press conference was where were you? <laughs> that was the only thing. And it was almost an hour long press conference. He had said a lot of important things. But the only thing that Gambians took away from that talk was his question about Dr. Cesar's whereabouts. So he communicated what he lost, the communication and the messaging. So messaging is very important. When you talk to people, first you have to have a message, you also have to respect the people that you talk to. And this is why what I find here very important is this idea that you come to a place, you start at 12 o'clock. Because if you're coming to speak to you like, uh, I don't want to mess up your name. <laughs> <laughs> it's, there's a guy who respected you guys enough to come and watch SSO in person. Went and watch videos of what, what, what was said before you guys. Did this homework that is respecting the people that you're talking to. But you also have to have believability. You can come here and say everything, but if people do not believe in what you're saying, it amounts to nothing. But for that to happen, you have to also have honesty. Because, like me, I'm always ranting and leaving. Against Jawara, I did, against. Jame I did against Baro I did. But if people do not believe in what I'm saying, if they see that I don't have the credibility to see what I'm saying, that takes away people's desire to even want to listen to me. So every time I talk, at the back of my mind, because when I talk now, it's uh, either on, on, on our audio program or on Facebook Live, I don't see the people watching me. I can see that people are watching, but I'm not seeing people. But at the back of my mind is okay, so make sure whatever you say here can be verified. Because if I go and say a lie, I make mistakes every time. 
But at least the audience should be able to say, you know what, maybe he meant well. For the most part, most of the time, what he says is credible. Because if you lack that credibility, nobody listens to you. During the impasse, something very interesting happened in this country. Halifax Sala had been speaking to Gambians for what, since 1977 with uh, the program he had on Radio Gambia, Magi Elik. But during the impasse, whenever they said Halifa was coming to speak, everybody around the world stopped what they were doing to listen to him. Not that he was very popular, because mm -hmm. well, he's not translated in quotes, but there is something that he has. And that is people know that he will never tell you what is not the truth. He will focus on the facts, and that was satisfying people enough to want to sit and listen to him. In 2004, something very interesting happened in the United States. A young man with a very funny name, American context, gave a speech at the US, at the Democratic Congress. And that was Barack Hussein Obama. This was at a time where America was a very polarized country, this anti Muslim sentiments. Saddam Hussein, Barack Hussein Obama. What's it called? What's it called? Osama bin Laden, Obama. So you can see how that. So nobody knew this guy. John Kerry picked him to deliver his key keynote address. When he spoke, there is no red or blue America. There is the United States of America. The, the, the light bulbs went on. Not because he was smarter than anybody, he's a smart guy. But the message that he delivered, the manner in which he delivered it, the credibility that he presented, most people started saying, you know what? The first black president of the United States is this guy. 2004. Of course, 2008, he became the president of the United States. And his presidency was propelled by one speech. The one that he gave at the Democratic Congress. So when you speak, be always mindful of the people that you speak to. Something that happens to the Gambia quite often is this culture of elitism. That's, that's not true. When people ask me about my education background, I tell them, uh, bad guy, that's where my university is. Because I believe I was taught more through my interactions with people in this country than any college that I've attended. Because they teach you life. They teach you how to understand. And our people, we have great orators and they never sat on a university. If you go to university, I don't know here at the UTT, but I know in the United States, you don't have to take speak classes for the most part. I love it. But the body language doesn't say, the non-verbal communication. Everybody gets nervous to let me speak, which is okay. It's just human to get up. But everybody's looking at you and I don't want to mess up. That's okay. But if you have a message and you're guided by the principle of speaking the truth, that would eventually overcome that nervousness. So like I was saying, I've had the greatest curators in this world who've never sat on the university bench. But when they speak, they inspire. Because they have a message and they have a reply. And communication doesn't only stop at what we're doing here. When you make some tough today, we have so many tasks in this country. When you say tough in relation to the government, the first thing that comes to mind is TAF, now it was TAF's construction, now it's TAF Global, Africa, Africa Global. You know why? Because of communication and marketing, because when you market, there's communication. 
Warren Buffett, who is one of the richest people in the world, when he bought Coca Cola, he had a strategy that they would market Coca Cola to the extent that when you see a soft drinks, the first thing that comes to your mind is Coke. And that happened in the United States when you talk about insurance, it's guy. Every many days guy. And they have these very, very funny commercials. And that's it. It's, it's a matter of communication. But again, communication, the importance of it, it has a very, the mind is very dangerous. You see, it in the one. Was people who sat sat behind the mic in a radio station in a booth may not even know who were listening to them, but the message that they were communicating to the people was a very destructive one. When they were done, thousands of people were killed. So when you speak, you also have to understand the consequences of your message. Let's say I have John Taffy and the great thing that they do in their marketing. If I were to speak on behalf of Taff today and say something that is derogatory, derogatory or whatever, something not nice maybe about a section of this country. Let's say for example, I'm speaking to people on behalf of a company. Everybody knows that I am the spokesperson of that company. And I decide to say something against the managers. You know what would happen? Can you imagine the effect that would have on the company? Now, I am the messenger here, speaking on behalf of a company and say something about a particular group in this country. This is why in the United States and the Western world, most companies, they have the South Dallas there, they have their lawyers. Before everything comes out, they will vet it to make sure that it will stand the test of time. That is why most of the time when they are sued, they don't go to court. You know why? Because of the message that was sent, the communication again, the importance of it. Because if you take me to court today, who knows what might come out? It can affect my company. So my lawyers will talk to you and say, you know what, we can settle this out of court. Not that because they are, not, they are afraid of winning the case, but the unintended consequences of the talks. So in essence, what I'm saying here is, it is absolutely important that when we speak, communicate in any way, whether in writing, simply with them. Sometimes I go on social media, it's not a bad thing, it's a great thing. Trump loves it. <laughs> but here you also have the problem of communication when it comes to Trump. This is why for the most part, his administration is very busy at trying to correct or clarify statements that he has made. Our government has a problem too. <laughs> because whenever a statement comes from the state house, it will be followed by an order statement to clarify the statement. So then, you see that the problem with communication, it is always important that when you go to social media or whatever it is, let's speak or write things that would inspire a nation. There is nothing wrong with criticizing your government. But let's also move away from things that will not do anything but undermine the stability of this country. You're not doing it for power, you're not doing it for me. But we will we will be treated in a country that was peaceful. It is our responsibility to be with a country that is greater than the one that was created to us by our forefathers. And for that to happen, we must not we must not be taken by the sensationalization that goes on. It's easy. Now it's different. You read the time because I really love you. Something happens, you see it home until 10 o'clock news for to, to hear it. Now, I'm in the diaspora, I sometimes would hear things before even governments hear, hear it, and it happened here in the government. I can call the state house and order, oh, Barrow is going to be saying this. So I can even do a speech before it is delivered, because that's the 
era that we have it today. So, like I said, you guys are great leaders, and uh, this is one of the greatest things that I've happened to this country, where young minds are being molded to become responsible leaders of the world. And I believe with this initiative, and with the energy that I've seen here today, the level of intelligence, I'm a little bit intimidated by this intelligence here. The Gambia has a very bright future, but when we speak, they speak a language that will be able to defend tomorrow. Or oh, one where, if my kids hear my videos, I hope they will not come to me and say that. Please tell me you are the only one trying to divide a nation or put a country alive. That's why when I speak, I'm always very mindful of that. I'm not perfect, never will be. I will forever be an activist. I will criticize, I've done it on the Jawara, I've done it on the Jamme, I'm going to do it on the Baro, and uh, maybe the next president who may be from this <laughs> <laughs> Affordable housing, you know, 
And they said, no, 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 no. This will cause trouble to you if you want to save man. Because he's the one who should save, not you. So really, that's again communicating. You need to understand how you communicate. You might say something, what do you think it means X when it's the opposite to others? So that was one. Now, our kind of project, we seem to be having some hurdles with it. You know why? Because we, we have four components there. One is commercial, two is residential, the other is industrial, the fourth is um, um, logistics. But I have noticed that people are the only picking up on the residential. Oh, we've taken this valuable land now and given it to TAF, so they're going to divide the plots now and now turn the airport into a residential estate. If you ask me, and you know we market it heavily, but well, that's what we do. When we market, we market it as if we are talking to Americans and uh, the global, but it's not the same in Gambia. Mm. You have to be careful. Because somebody sits there and thinks, ah, why? You got a and you do And you know, so, so if you ask me really, I think we go market it a little bit. I would have done it different. But you learn. You don't have all the answers. At times, why do you think that what you learn in uni and the textbook and what is happening in the global market might not be the same here. Let me give you a good example again. In Nigeria, in some societies, cultural, this must take into account. You cannot shake your elders' hands. Yeah, for sure. You know that? Here, once for us, we go slam on every door. Ah, in Nigeria, you a small guy, they're going to shut. What do you mean? Why, you come? Why should you shake my hand? So again, you need to understand also cultures. You know? So, uh, like now, in the Dubai thing and so on, you just gotta shake the lady's hand these days. So I go like, but should I really shake her hand? You know? So so again, all these things you, you it's experience that teaches you these things. Um, um let me also give you a tip. When you don't understand at times the subject matter, and it happens all the time. Like at times I will be prepared to deliver a talk on affordable housing, and then you have a lawyer who goes and research so much in one area, and all he wants to do is to take you on. You have to have the skills. You know that probably you're not very, you have not decided much for that, or you're not very fair with the subject matter. You need to find a way of dodging it. And stories are always good with this. So somebody might ask, okay, like what did he say? He got you on. I mean, that, I didn't even hear him. What did he say? What he wanted, and he said he was a research, he's a researcher. The uh, Asian 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 I don't even know what it <laughs> So what you do is, probably you will then take a story out of that. You say, okay, but let me give you an example. And then, what probably you, have, you, you, you would have been most prepared, you might probably take it through that. Yeah, yeah, sure. So stories at times can solve you when you are in those positions. Because people will take you to task. So that, that's a tip I'll have to give you. Humor. Also, it helps. I always start my, you notice this, I want people to relax, to accept it. Recently, in Kigali, when, I mean, there were, I saw this new, there, were, there was a two-day um, uh, conference. And in my session, it was uh, challenges and opportunities in leading and, um, um, uh, leading and um, investing in African countries or African businesses. African in businesses. Anyway, so first there are about four or five sessions, so they allow people to choose. My haul was probably about 60% full or so. So they allow you to come the second time after probably people are, you know, they've got into different sessions to see which one is the most popular. But I ended up almost on the second day oversubscribed. It wasn't about really the issues I was discussing, but it was how much I engaged the crowd. You know, I start first by saying, listen, I'm so, as a speaker, people you know about me. And I'm sure my uncle must have told you about me. Some of you are coming from, you know, different African countries. They don't know who my uncle is. Who must have told you? And of course, yes. You know, I expect that my uncle will tell you, oh, who's your uncle? <laughs> uncle Google. <laughs> That's what you do. I mean, when, 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 when somebody now comes up and you're meeting him for the first time, what do you do? You Google him up. And he tells you everything about him. That's the day today. So our uncle and your granddad. <laughs> granddad, Google, Google. 
So you have to learn all these. Um, um, and then also double check on things, you know, research, research all the time. I'll give you a very good example. Not only in speeches, when you write, that's why you spell check. You know, so don't only just write or even tweet without double checking. And because you're communicating, once it's gone at times, you cannot retrieve it. Yeah. So I told you this, I must have told you while this doing woodwork. My woodwork teacher used to say, measure twice and cut once. Okay. Don't only just measure, you might have made a mistake that you were thinking of putting eight centimeters when it's eight and a half. So if you double check, you might discover that you have made a mistake by half. Then you will cut your money. Good example, very funny one, when I used to have a secretary. You know these days we don't have secretaries. So we had a secretary and um, I was writing to my fax actually, to my bank manager in Standard Chattered Bank. Um, uh, he's an Indian guy and I think um, uh, Ashok was his name. So I gave my secretary to write a letter to, to, to him, you know, and obviously I didn't check before I put my signature because I trusted her. So she went in and she spell checked the letter. So Ashok, there Mr. Ashok. If you spell check in the English language, what is the closest word to Ashok? And I didn't check, all I did was just to fax it to the guy. And I realized afterwards that there Mr. Ashok. <laughs> and, and I called him immediately and he was laughing. <laughs> For communicating, or to destroy a whole relationship. I just like what, what um, our coach said about our present government and communication. So it is key, and on that note, I want to thank Mr. Mahoney, our lecturer, and um, Coach Pastor Rajao for doubling in. You know, I guess we have learned a lot, and I'm sure you will communicate with them. As I always say, share, share, and share. We want to move on.